Welcome back to Up Front and our extended interview with Wisconsin Congressman Paul Ryan. Uh, on the issues, again, you were asked about the minimum wage this week. You and I have talked about that in, in months past. Uh, you said you don't support minimum wage, but you also don't support uh, an, increase. an increase. Yeah, yeah I make that clear. Uh, but you also don't support um, uh, taking legislative action to deal with this, this uh, tax inversion right. issue, which is where you have Burger King merging with a Canadian firm, Tim Hortons, so they can avoid paying, uh, move corporate headquarters overseas or to Canada, and avoid paying the American corporate tax rate. Um, you don't favor that. I'm wondering, do you feel that your positions and Republican positions are in line with mainstream American well, thought? Well, uh, on the surface, they may not be popular, but I believe they're correct. I f I, my answer to inversions is fix the U.S. tax code and get our tax rates down so that they're competitive. The Canadians are just north of Lake Superior on, us, on our border, and they have a 15% tax rate on all of their businesses. We in America tax our businesses from 35 to almost 45 percent. It's, it's killing our competitiveness. So don't create new legislation so, right, to address it. So here's it the problem that will happen. I've been doing tax law for a long time. If you erect this kind of barrier, this, this, this whack-a-mole inversion, anti-inversion approach, all you'll do is make it easier for U.S. companies to be taken over by foreign companies. Foreign companies will, have, will take over more U.S.-based companies. That's the merger trend we see. We would simply accelerate that trend because we'd make U.S. companies even less competitive. So the answer isn't to try and make it harder uh, for U.S. companies to be able to, to operate. It is to get our rates down so that we can keep American companies. With respect to the minimum wage, my argument is there are better ways of improving people's lot in life through economic growth. The Congressional Budget Office is telling us if you guys raise the minimum wage, it could cost you as much as a half a million to a million jobs. Some of the best jobs I had were minimum wage jobs, working at McDonald's, waiting tables. They get you into the workforce and get you good skills. The goal here isn't to keep a person there. It's to have a good education system and an economy that helps them keep growing, and that's what we should be focusing on. But there are a number of adults who are in these jobs, and wouldn't it make their lives better if the minimum wage But it raised? also takes away minimum wage jobs. If you make it harder for a small business person to hire somebody, they'll hire less people. At a time when we have the lowest labor force participation rates, meaning the lowest level of able-bodied adults working in America since the 19, late 1970s, that's a problem for our economy, and we don't want to shrink the available jobs to them. We want to expand the available jobs, and then we want to focus on doing things that get them in better jobs, better education, better welfare to work programs. I think the earned income tax credit should be reformed to increase and bring people more into the workforce. So I think there are, are ways of doing this without costing jobs in the economy, which, which the economists at the CBO are telling us will happen. Uh, you, you use a word in this book uh, often, and, and the word is prudent. Mm -hmm. And I've got to tell you that when I think of politics today, I don't think of the word prudent. That's why, why, do you, why do you choose to use that word? Because I think it's a word we need to think about again. It is a virtue. And prudence is basically good judgment in the art of governing. That means if you can't get everything you want at a certain time, settle for a step in the right direction. Sometimes you can take a big step, sometimes you can take a small step. But that's okay. Uh, when Patty Murray and I put together our bipartisan budget agreement, we got hit from both sides of our parties. Um, but I would argue it was a prudent step in the right direction, and that's okay. I think people, policymakers need to keep their eye on that, which is you can't always get what you want, but move in the right direction if you can incrementally. That's not a bad thing. It's actually what compromise involves. A couple of final questions about your plans for 2016, should you be reelected in your bid for Congress. Uh, this book, I look at this cover, this is not Paul Ryan standing with your arms folded in front of the, the nation's capital, the policy guy. This is Paul Ryan on the campaign trail. I mean, can't people draw their own conclusions that this looks like a guy who might be running for president? Well, it, it, it's, my my, it's my answer to what we should do differently because we, I think we're on the wrong track. It's my answer to trying to build a conservative movement that is capable of winning national elections. With respect to 2016, I honestly don't know the answer to that question. Jana and I are going to sit down in 2015 and think this through uh, with all the right kinds of circumstances that you, you put into making that decision. But right now, as a leader, I feel that if I don't like the direction we're going, which I don't, I ought to offer an alternative. That's why I wrote this book. So here's the final question. Can someone from Congress, a body with a 14 percent approval rating, uh, someone who's a major player, in this body that is known for its dysfunction, some people would say. Can someone from Congress be elected president, given today's political yeah, of dynamics? Course, but, but I think what, whoever our nominee is going to be and whoever is going to be elected president, it ought to be a person that is serious about principles but offers alternatives and shows the country a better way forward. Because the kinds of elections we're going to have to win, in my judgment, if we want to save the American idea, are the kinds of elections where the American people give us the mandate and the authority to fix our country's problems before they're outside of our control. Aren't you describing yourself when you, when you gave that description well, it could of be who any, could run? Me or anybody else. The point is, 
I'm not the only person. There are other leaders that are out there. But we need to lead. We need to show the country a better way forward. That's why I wrote this book. Congressman Paul Ryan, the uh, Republican from Janesville, who's also running for re-election. It's good to have you back on Thanks. the program. Nice to be back. You bet. Next, what a drop in the state revenue says about Wisconsin's economy.